in this video to present a parent meeting for the First Reconciliation Program for those of you that missed the parent meeting last week, okay? Um, this will just give you some of the basics that you need to know for the program, where we're headed, what we're doing, um, and then if you have any questions about anything that I present in this video, feel free to shoot me an email um, and I will clarify anything that maybe I didn't, that I don't cover here, okay? Hopefully I will cover everything, but if I, if you still have questions, please feel free to reach out, okay? First and foremost, um, the First Reconciliation Program, the diocese and the Catholic Church says that children at the age of seven are at the age of reason and therefore able to make their first reconciliation. Now, there was some confusion with emails that were sent out to first grade, second grade, and third grade families telling them, you know, first reconciliation is happening and, and all of that. The reason that it, that it went out um, to multiple grades is because some because of the pandemic, some people missed a year of school or um, instruction uh, for faith formation or whatever the case may be. So we weren't sure if we had seventh graders coming in um, in first grade, if we had seventh graders coming in at second grade or some that missed everything last year and are now in third grade. So we do apologize for the confusion. We were trying to just kind of throw it out there and see who needed to make their first reconciliation and first Eucharist this year. Um, so you do need to have a child that is seven years old or in second grade or in third, okay? But seven or older in that range, okay? So if your child is not seven or older, um, then you need to let me know. Um, I have tried to reach people that I did see that registered late, but if anybody registered recently, and you are um, not in that category, then we need to, to either refund you or figure that out, okay? So you, your child must be seven years old or in second or third grade, okay? All right, um, so first reconciliation also has to come before first Eucharist and both sacraments are in this year. So it's a really important time for your, your child's uh, spiritual development, but it's also a really, um, chaotic time with trying to juggle all these classes and knowing that and knowing that we're all transitioning back to a quote-unquote normal schedule um, we decided to make these camps a, a little more of an intensive program spread out so that you don't have to come to an extra class week after week after week um, for the the 12 weeks of uh, six weeks for first reconciliation and six weeks for first Eucharist we decided to do a camp for two Saturdays, three hours each, and then make the sacrament, okay? So for First Reconciliation, there'll be Camp 1, Camp 2, and then receiving the sacrament. And for First Eucharist in the, in the, I guess it's not quite the spring, yeah, I guess it's almost the spring, winter, spring um, of next year, um, it'll be the same thing, a camp and a camp, and then rehearsal and, and receiving the sacrament, okay? This will hopefully help, um, you know, to just kind of build on the learning piece too, because I don't know that, you know, sometimes going week to week, by the time kids get settled, the actual learning window kind of shrinks and then you got to go another week and then you got to try to build on that. So we're hoping this will build a better understanding, better foundation as well. So what will happen, um, our first one is going to be on November 6th. Now, in your brochure, it says that it's going to be at Our Lady of Lords. It is not going to be at Our Lady of Lords. Um, we had to make a change because at the time that I published my brochure, we weren't sure what the Lithuanian school was doing, um, but they are going to be in Our Lady of Lords that same weekend. So we had a better ability to move than they did, so we decided to move our camp over to Our Lady Queen of Peace for that morning, okay? So on November 6th, from 9 a.m. to 12, we'll have our first camp for reconciliation. Um, and what that's going to look like is that students will come in to the church and families, um, and we will have you stay with us just for that first 15 minutes, okay? 
And then parents, you can feel free to go, go shopping, run errands, do other things with the kids and then come back um, for your child at 12. You are not required to stay for the whole thing. If you want to stay, see me and then I will make sure that you're um, that you have a role to play and we can do that but if you if you just want to be able to drop your child off and then come pick them up that is fine okay that's that's the expectation for that um, and they'll come into you'll all come into the church and what we're going to do we are not we did not do an inscription in the church and a lot of people are saying well what is an inscription I know that's not um, a tradition that's been um, happening at St. Anne's and Our Lady of Lourdes in many years um, and at Queen of Peace and St. Thomas More it was so we're we're just kind of gonna explain what we're what we're meaning by that so an inscription is when you present the children to the community at large the, per, the parish communities and say these are the children that are making their first reconciliation and first Eucharist this year can you please pray for them on their journey well knowing that for our families, our kids aren't vaccinated yet, and many of you are not comfortable bringing them to church, and rightfully so. So we don't want to force you to come into the church if you're not prepared or ready for that yet, and have the children presented, um, but we also didn't want to deny them the chance to be recognized. So how we decided to do this was that on the day of the camp, that first day, um, Father Hart and Father Timon will be at Our Lady Queen of Peace to acknowledge the children, you know, and, and do the right of, do you, you know, do you agree to do your best to try to learn, you know, what you can about the sacraments and the children say I do and all of that. Um, and then it's a little blessing over them and then they'll start their first class. Okay, so the first 15 minutes will be that mini inscription. Um, and then the priest blessing and then they'll go on their way and then we'll publish the list of names um, for people to be praying for them um, so that they're acknowledged and prayed for throughout by the the greater community that is vaccinated and has been coming to church um, just to keep that connection because definitely that spiritual connection in our community is really necessary right now for for all uh, all directions right so that's what we're going to do so the first 15 minutes we do the prayer, then parents, you can go do whatever you need to do. I will break off the children into two groups. We'll have two different catechists there. Um, one is Mrs. Vacanti, and another one I'm, I'm working on filling a, a spot. It may be Mrs. Ostromecki, it may be somebody else that I can find to fill in. Um, and we will have two smaller um, classes for the first hour um, to learn about their first chapter and then chapter two we're all going to come together and they're going to do a little activity with me and we're going to um, explain uh, the next chapter in a little more animated active way um, and then the third hour is spent back in the classroom to finish up with chapter three of that first section okay so that's half the book that'll be covered in three hours um, hopefully in an animated and fun way um, and then as they're leaving at 12 o'clock, now we don't, we're not going to have them eating um, inside the church because we don't want kids taking off masks inside the church. But what we will do is on the way out the door to help you out, parents, I'm going to have bagged lunches to go so that at least the kids will have something to eat in the car on the way home. I know three hours is a long time, um, but... We thought maybe if, if we can't have them eat there, at least we can help you out by having them have a bag lunch to go um, so that you don't have to worry about having to go find lunch for them or, or however long. Because some of, some of you that live out, um, you know, by St. Anne's, maybe that's a long little car ride, you know, 10, 20 minutes sometimes. So we're just trying to make sure that we help everybody out with that. Okay. All right. So that's the part one camp. The part two camp is on November 20th, okay? So you have a little bit of a break in between, then we come back on the 20th, and on the 20th we do part two, and that's gonna be at St. Thomas More, okay? Ideally, I would have had one at one place and one at the other, uh, one at one cluster and one at the other, but because of the Lithuanian school, it got a little mixed up. It will not be that way for First Eucharist. I will definitely have it at uh, representing, you know, the kids at um, Our Lady of Lords. 
and then St. Thomas More, I think, again, for the First Eucharist. Okay, we're going to, it was not our intention to have it all on this side for First Reconciliation, so I do apologize for that happening. It was not an intentional thing, um, for sure. So on the 20th, we will be over at St. Thomas More, and the same thing, we'll come in at 9, we'll break off into our two classrooms, then we'll come together for uh, the second hour for the next chapter, and then the last chapter, which I think is chapter 6, uh, they'll break off again, and then at 12 o'clock, they'll um, have a prayer, final prayer, be dismissed, have their um, bag lunch to go. And we will do, um, in that second camp, a rehearsal of how to go to confession, okay? So they will work with me and this is how you go to confession. This is what we say. This is how we do things. I will have cards that the kids, I did send them home at the parent meeting for the act of contrition, but I will um, link everything that you need in the newsletters. So it won't be this week, but next week you'll start seeing all the things come up, um, the forms you need, the prayers you need. Um, maybe I'll include it. We'll see how much time I have today to get it all in there, but um, but it will be on there. And moving forward, just keep looking for the newsletter and you will find it, okay? Um, and then for the day of receiving first reconciliation. So December 4th is the day that we will have two places that they can receive first reconciliation, okay? So St. Thomas More will be it in Our Lady of Lords, it'll be at 11, okay? So if you are, um, I had people sign up in advance where they're going to be, which place they prefer. Um, those of you that did not make the parent meeting, I will need to reach out to you and just ask you to let me know where you're going to go and I'll, I'll have the clipboard with me at the camps so that I know where to expect you. And I also need you to not only fill out at that time where you're going to have your child receive the sacrament, but also um, the name you want on their certificate that tells me how you want it spelled. And, you know, some people want the formal name, some people want the nickname, but just so that I can have the certificate ready and at the church that you pick for your child to go to. Now, if you can't do December 4th, if there's already something on your schedule or something you can't get out of to be able to do um, the Sacrament of Reconciliation for your child, then we would have you meet with um, or connect with your parish priest and see if we can arrange a private one. But they don't want to do that unless it's absolutely necessary, okay? So if we can have December 4th, try to shoot for those two times. Now the other thing is you can choose either one, even if you don't go to St. Thomas More, if nine o'clock works better, you can go to that one. Um, or at Our Lady of Lourdes, if 11 o'clock is better for your schedule, you can go to that one. Um, you don't have to be from either cluster. It doesn't matter. In our faith formation world, we don't really have borders. We're just kind of flowing all around. Um, you can go to either one, but if you can't make either of them, and it's really absolutely necessary, then we'll schedule private ones, okay? All right. So that's about it. There's really not that much to it. As far as uh, what we need to do from home, um, they will get the book at the camp and we will keep the book at camp until the second one is done. When we're done with the second camp on the 20th, we will send the book home with the kids so that they can read it over and kind of, um, it'll, talk, it'll walk them through the steps on how to go to confession. I'll have videos about it too in the newsletter just to refresh their memory because there is a little bit of time between November 20th and December 4th. We want to make sure they remember what to say and do. It's also good to remember that in the confessional, I'll have the form there. They can read it. They'll know what to say in there. They don't have to memorize anything. It'll all be there for them because um, I know they get scared and they don't, you know, I hope they won't. If we're teaching it well, they won't be scared. <laughs> um, but I know it's a little nerve wracking for the kids. So, all right, I think that's all I have. Um, if you have any questions about this video or anything that we're doing, please feel free to let me know. If uh, there's anything I did not cover that you're not clear on, please also let me know. Um, you can email me at jenniferabdella at dor.org um, and I will get back to you as soon as I can um, and let me know. And otherwise, I will have the clipboards with me and we will see you on November 6th 
at Our Lady Queen of Peace, 9 o'clock to 12. We'll see you there. God bless. Take care.